well, I shouldn't say suffer, but a high-speed plane will uh, move a lot more erratically with just a little bit of thumb control at high speeds than it does at low speeds. So by setting the end point at 50% or whatever percentage you want, um, you have a lot more give because you can now throw your thumb all the way to the right and the control surface, be that rudder, aileron, elevator, what have you, it won't go to its full deflection. It will only go 50% of the way. So um, you, can't, you can't jerk the plane, you can't jostle the plane as much. Um, the downside to that is you lose um, full deflection. If you need that full deflection, you don't have it. Now there are ways to get around that. I don't know how to do it, and I don't think this transmitter is capable of it. I think maybe it is, but I'm not sure. And it's not something a beginner pilot needs anyhow. But you can uh, set it so that your transmitter, um, with the flick of a switch, will go from 120% down to 50%. Um, but that's advanced pilot stuff. And if, if you are an advanced pilot, you probably already know how to do that, and you're not listening to this tutorial anyhow. That's endpoints. Um, I'm going to change that back to 120 and 120. And you can change this to whatever you want, by the way. You can just have the left stick at 50%, or I'm sorry, the left side. Right now I've got the left side at 50% and the right side still at 120%. So if you watch the black bar, all the way to the left, I still only have half a black bar. All the way to the right, black bar goes all the way to the right. That's 50%, 120%. Reversing, you have already seen what reversing is good for. Um, if you throw the stick to the left, whatever stick you have, if you throw the stick to the left, but the control surface goes in the wrong direction, all you gotta do is reverse it. And I imagine the NR stands for normal. Um, checked is normal, unchecked is reverse. And the servo doesn't care, that doesn't hurt the servo or anything. Uh, that's all you gotta do. It saves you from flipping a servo upside down or putting it on the other side of the aircraft. Um, it's just an easy way to reverse the direction of your servo. Sub trim. I am going to skip sub trim. Am I going to skip sub trim? No, I'm not. I'm going to do it. I never use sub trim, but I think I can walk through it. If you look at channel one, um, there's just, just a tiny little sliver of black. Um, up on channel one, which means that it's uh, centered. The stick is uh, centered. Well, say you're playing. Um, actually, I'm going to explain it a different way. Sub trim is the same thing as the trim tab here. If you watch the black bar while I move the trim tab, you can see that it goes to the left and it goes to the right. And that's to trim out an aircraft. If you get your aircraft up in the air and it's um, banking to the left a little bit, you would trim it to the right. Okay, that's all that is. Sub trim is the same way. Sub trim on the transmitter and sub trim here. It's the same thing. Dual rates. I'm going to skip dual rates. Don't use dual rates. Can't confidently give you an explanation of dual rates, so I'm going to skip dual rates. Mode. Um, this is easy to explain. Um, mode 1. All this does is tells you which channels are which stick. Channel 1, oops, sorry. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 3, channel 4. All mode does is selects different locations for the channels. Um, mode 1 is channel 1. Channel 2, Channel 3, and Channel 4. And I hope you can see that, but uh, you may not. It's very easy to understand. Uh, open T6, click on Mode, and you can see what the differences are. Uh, type, this is important. Um, these are uh, four different settings for uh, Acro. I would assume stands for Acrobatic Airplane. Um, Healy 120, Healy 90, and Healy 140. Don't know what the numbers mean. Um, they may stand for uh, the degrees that the servo throws. Um, the only thing you need to be worried about if you're flying airplanes is this needs to be an acro. Um, just assume that acro means airplane. 
uh, mix. Mix is pretty, in, well, it's not that it's pretty important. It's simply, it gives you options as to what you can do uh, as far as advanced functions. Uh, I'm going to skip it. I'm going to come back to it. Switch A. Switch A is that guy right there. I have uh, it doing nothing, so we're going to go over to switch B. Switch B I have set as a throttle lock. If you click on switch B, you'll see that you have a dialog box that comes up. You have three options. You have null, dual rate, and throttle cut, throw cut, which stands for throttle cut. Null means the switch is inoperative. Uh, dual rate uh, enables dual rate, which I think means... Um, Earlier when I was talking about you can have a plane flying at 120%, 120% at slow speeds, but at high speeds you can flip on dual rate and it'll go down to 50%, 50%. I think that's what dual rates are. Um, I don't have a, I just, I don't use that, so I can't confidently explain it, but I think that's what it is. So if you were to select dual rates here, um, the switch would then turn on and off dual rates, which would turn on and off to 50% functionality. However, I have it set as throttle cut, which means this is my throttle, and you can see the black bar moving. That means my throttle is operating. If I flip this, my throttle instantly goes to zero. You can see that I now have no throttle. Throttle comes back. Throttle goes away. That's good for uh, carrying your airplane without disconnecting the battery. Um, you can pick up the airplane and have your hand closer to the propeller uh, and not have to worry about accidentally hitting the switch, your throttle stick, and cutting a finger off. Um, and it's good for other things too. Um, it's a nice safety feature. If your plane goes down in a tree, um, you can instantly cut throttle. Uh, it's kind of obvious what it's for, so use it as, as you want. VRA and VRB are the knobs, and they can do a bunch of different stuff. Um, if you see that, um, that's channel 5, and it's going left to right. You can put um, this stick to cancel that functionality via the mix button. So why don't we see if I can figure out how to do that. I I did know how to do that. I was using that feature at one point. I don't any longer, but we can kind of turn this switch into a cutoff switch for the knob. So you would do that by clicking mix. Um, mix number is simply, you have three mixes that you can have. Mix number is which mix you're working with. Um, the source is going to be VRA, which is the knob. The destination is channel 5 which is the black bar up here it can be channel 5 or channel 6 doesn't matter it's simply your preference up rate and down rate are just percentages that's kind of like uh, the endpoints and then the switch you assign it to which switch you want it to be so I want VRA which is the knob on switch A which is the toggle switch right above it okay so this reads mix A, VRA, channel 5, 100%, 100%, 100% switch A. Click OK. You've now set a mix. And let's see if this is going to work the way I want it to. Knob is turning, black bar is moving, flip the switch, black bar goes away, and now the switch does nothing. Flip the switch, black bar has come back. Flip the switch again, black bar goes away. Your, the functionality there is, is up to your imagination. Uh, one uh, goofy way that, or a goofy use for that would be flaps. Um, if you had flaps set up and, how should I say this? One way that you can have flaps is so that turning this knob will lower your flaps. Like this could be flaps at normal, parallel with the wing, and then I'm coming in for a landing, I now have lowered my flaps, and I can come in much slower. All right? So not only could you um, have it simply set up like that, but you could have your flaps on a toggle switch. So right now, let's say my flaps are completely deployed. Flip the switch. 
Now they go back to uh, parallel with the wing. Now they go down, parallel with the wing. You can do it like this. You can manually turn the dial. Much easier to flip the switch. That's one example out of countless for features that you can use mix with or mix for. Um, another thing is setting uh, flaperons, elevons, I think elevons, which are, uh, what you can do is when you are in a banked turn using your uh, ailerons, you can set a mix so that it also um, moves your rudder as well. And that would be, say, uh, mix channel 2 to mix channel 4, so that when you are in a banked turn, not only do your ailerons move when you move the aileron stick, but your rudder will also move, but just by using the aileron stick. Another feature would be flaperons, but that's a, an advanced mix for this transmitter. It's, it's an easy mix for more expensive transmitters. It's a, an expensive mix, or not expensive, it's a complicated mix for this transmitter. Um, there's a tutorial here on YouTube of a guy setting flaperons with this transmitter, but it requires all three mixes. So use all three mixes simply for one feature. Now you have you don't have any extra functionality. Um, I think that's about it. That's really all I can show you. Um, hopefully this helped you a little bit. Um, the most important thing that you need to know is that as a new beginner pilot is how to set your transmitter up for one plane, save the file, um, set your transmitter up for another plane, save the file, and then you can switch between the two. And that, of course, requires you to take a laptop out to your flying field and um, connect the cable between planes, which is exactly what I do. I did it an hour and a half ago when I went flying. Um, I took my Hawk Sky out. I took my home-built plane out. Um, I have no choice but to take my laptop out and uh, switch between the two when I uh, change planes. That may seem like a lot of hassle. A lot of guys don't like to do that. They have expensive transmitters that have uh, the settings, the reversing, the mixes all built into the transmitter and don't require a laptop, but to each his own. My transmitter was $32. I already had a laptop. It's no thing for me to take my laptop out to the field with me, so I do that. Um, $32, already had the laptop, versus having to buy a $200 transmitter. Um, to each their own, like I just said. Everybody has their preferred way of doing things. That's how I do it. Um, it required me to learn how to use T6 config. Um, I had to read through a couple different PDFs on how to use it and had to stumble through it on my own. Um, so I made this tutorial so that uh, hopefully other people could have an easier time at it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial and I hope it was helpful and have a nice day.